Hey, Math 20 2s. Today we're going to look at quadratic functions, a bit of a review and a preview of what's coming up. All right. Relations. Much of mathematics involves the search for patterns and relationships between sets of data. Many real life applications of mathematics investigate the relationship between two quantities. For example, cost, say capital C in cents per kilometer, of driving a car is related to the speed S in kilometers per hour at which it is driven, or price of a watermelon is related to its weight. In math, a comparison between two sets of elements is called a relation. In previous courses, we represent the relationship between two quantities in many different ways. We did it in words, we did it with an equation, a table of values, a graph, a set of ordered pairs, function notation, where it was relevant. These representations will be reviewed in this lesson. So let's consider the relationship between x and y. Let's say a relation is defined by the equation y equals 3x plus 5. The relation can be defined, <coughs> or in part 2, the relation is defined by the equation y equals x squared plus 4. Part A asks, in what ways are the equations 1 alike and 2 different? Well, they are alike for part 1 as they're both written as y equals, all right? All right, so they're both y equals equations. They also have the variables x and y. And they both have a constant. Part 2, how are they different? Well, equation 1 has a degree of 1, meaning the exponent on any one of the variables is 1, whereas equation 2 is of degree 2. meaning one of the variables has an exponent of 2. Use the equation to complete the table of values below. So all we're doing is simply substituting the value of x into this and solving for y. So y equals 3 times negative 3 plus 5. That is oh, not how you substitute in. y is negative 3 plus 5. Sorry, 3 times negative 3 plus 5, which is negative 9, plus 5, which is negative 4. When x is negative 1, we substitute negative 1 in. 3 times negative 1 plus 5, which is negative 3 plus 5, which is 2. When y, x is 1, we substitute 1 in. 3 times 1 plus 5, which is 3, add 5, which is 8. And we do the same thing with 3 and 5. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 5 is 14. And 5 times 3 is 15, plus 5 is 20. All right. Do the same thing over here. Simply substitute into the equation. Everywhere I see an x, I'm now going to put the values for x. So when x is negative 4, I substitute in for x. Negative 4 squared is 16, plus 4, so y is 20. When x is negative 2, I square that and add it to 4. So negative 2 squared is 4, plus 4 is 8. When x is 0, squared plus 4 is 0, plus 4, which is 4. The same thing again. When x is 2, 2 squared is 4, plus 4 is 8. 3 squared is 9, plus 4 is 13. 4 squared is 16, plus 4 is 20. All right, so that's how you complete the table of values. Part C. Use the table of values to plot the ordered pairs on the grid provided. So y equals 3x plus 5. Well, we've got the table of values on the previous page. Let's look at that. When x was negative 3, y was negative 4. All right. So when x was negative 3, y was negative 4. Plot that point. When x was negative 1, y was positive 2. Plot that point. 
one X was one, Y was eight, right there. One X was three, Y was 14. And finally, when X was five, Y was 20. So you get a straight edge and you connect those all the way through the grid, put an arrow on each end. That's the graph of the line Y equals three X plus five. Let's graph y equals x squared plus 4. Again, same idea. Let's plot the points. When x was negative 4, uh, let's just make sure we can see the bottom of this grid. When x was negative 4, y was 20. Plot that point. When x was negative 2, y was 8. When x was 0, y was 4. When x was positive 2, y was 8. When x was positive 3, y was 13. And when x was positive 4, y was 20. So let's connect these dots with a nice smooth curve. That's going to continue up forever. And same with that one. That's the graph of y equals x squared plus 4. All right. Like it says, join the points of the straight line on the first one, and nice smooth curve. In what ways are the graphs in previous up above, which, one, which ways are they alike and which ways are they different? So if you're looking at those, how are they alike? Well, both can be drawn with a nice continuous line or curve. So we say both are continuous. How are they different? Well, obviously, one is a straight line, and the other is curved. F, the domain of a relationship, is a set of all possible values for which we call, can, for which values, which can be used for the input of the independent variable. So all the values for x. Say the domain of the graph for y equals 3x plus 5. So if we're looking at domain, we look at this graph and we ask ourselves, what are all the possible x values, horizontal values along the x-axis? So x looks like, this graph looks like it's going forever to the left and down. It's going forever to the right and up. But worried about the horizontal values, so it's going forever right and forever left. So if the graph goes forever right and forever left, we say the domain x is any real number. Say the domain of the graph of y equals x squared plus 4. Again, if I look at this graph, this graph goes forever up and left. This graph goes forever up and right. Again, the graph's going forever left and forever right. So we're worried about left and right. That's our x values, horizontal values. So again, if it's going forever left and forever right, x can be any real number. The range is all the possible output values of the dependent variable or the y coordinates. <coughs> y is our vertical. So for the line, this graph goes forever up and this graph goes forever down. So when the graph goes forever up and forever down, y can be any real number. Look at graph two. This graph goes forever up. But it does not go forever down. In fact, it never gets lower than this point right here. And that point occurs when y is 4. So every value in this graph is greater than 4, because it goes forever up, or equal to 4. But there's nothing below the y value of 4. So our range for this graph should be y is greater than or equal to 4. And y can be any real number that is greater than or equal to 4. Part H. A functional relation or function is a special type of a relation in which each element of the domain is related to exactly one element of the range. If any element of the domain is related to more than one element of the range, then the relation is not a function, it's just a relation. Do the graphs in Part C represent functions? And what visual test can be used to determine this? Well, based on this definition, both graphs above are functions.
The visual test we can use is called the vertical line test. Which simply tells us if we can draw a vertical line through the graph and it only hits at one point, then it's a function. So I could draw as many vertical lines as I want. They're all only ever going to contact the graph at one point. You're never going to have a vertical line hit the graph at more than one point. If that is true, then it's considered a function. If the vertical line drawn hits the graph at more than one point, then it is no longer a function. It is only a relation. So, investigate the graphs of linear and quadratic functions. A linear function is a function whose graph is a line. A quadratic function is a graph of a function that's U-shaped. It can open up or it can open down. We call these graphs parabolas. The equation of the graphs of some functions are given below. In each case, use a graphing calculator to sketch the graph of the function on the grid provided. You don't have to list any x or y intercepts. Just go ahead and do a rough sketch. Once you're done doing that, we'll go through what they all should look like. So pause this, draw the sketches, and see what you come up with. All right. So if you're done graphing all 12 of these, here's what we should have. 3x plus 1 is a line that looks like that. Negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 is a parabola opening down. Y equals negative x cubed plus 1 is a cubic function. looks like that. Y is x squared minus 3, parabola opening up. Y equals 1 over x squared. That's an interesting looking graph, but this is what we get. Y equals x squared plus x plus 1 is a parabola opening up. Y equals 4x is a line. Y equals 2 to the exponent x. This is an exponential function. That's what that graph would look like. Here's a linear function, y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 2. Another linear function, y equals x. Another parabola, y equals x squared. And another cubic, y equals x cubed minus x squared. So based on those 12 graphs, list the equations of the graphs in the appropriate row. So linear are straight lines, quadratic are U-shaped curves opening up and down, and neither is exactly that. Either it's not a line nor a U-shaped graph. So go ahead and list them, pause the video and list them and see if you get the same things I get. So here's what you should have had. The linear functions, y equals 3x plus 1, y equals 4x, y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 2, and y equals x. The quadratic functions, y equals negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, y equals x squared minus 3, y equals x squared plus x plus 1, and y equals x squared. And neither, y equals negative x cubed plus 1, y equals 1 over x squared, but we could also write that, if we remember the rules of exponents, y equals x to the negative 2. That's the same thing. y equals 2 to the exponent x, and y equals x cubed minus x squared. So part C, how can you tell from the equation of a function whether the function is a quadratic function or not? Right? Well, all quadratic functions are degree 2. All right, so negative 2x squared, y equals x squared minus 3, y equals x squared plus x squared, y equals x squared. Those are all quadratic functions, degree 2. All right, you might say, but Mr. Zotner, this one looked like it's degree 2, but that's not the highest degree. This is actually degree 3. And before I change this one, it was 1 over x squared. You might say, hey, that's a quadratic function. But like I said, that can be written as 1 over, or uh, excuse me, x to the negative 2. And this is definitely not a degree 2. All right, that's a degree negative 2. So it must be a degree 2 polynomial function to be a quadratic function. So a quadratic function is a function which can be written in the form f at x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are elements of the real numbers and a can never equal 0. So these are coefficients, a, b, and c. Those are coefficients, all right? They're uh, numbers in front of the variables. 
with C being your constant, and they must be, they can be any real number. A can never be zero because as soon as you have A being zero, zero times the X squared means there's no X squareds left. That makes it just a linear function, BX plus C. So to be a quadratic function, you have to have the X squared there, so A can't equal zero. Or you could write an equation form, nil differences, functional form, equation form, F at X or Y, but they're the same definition after that. So without the use of technology, identify which of the following are quadratic functions. Y equals 2X squared minus 9. All right, so that's degree 2. So yes, it's a quadratic function. Y equals X squared minus X to the fifth. This is degree 5, so it is no, not a quadratic function. And F at X equals 3 minus 2X minus 1 fifth X squared. So A, B, and C are real numbers. The degree on the exponent is 2. So yes, it is a quadratic function. Example two, which of the following graphs appear to represent quadratic functions of the form? F at x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, this has a u-shaped curve, kind of, and this has, an, it also has another u-shaped curve. You put them together and you get an ellipse. So this is definitely not a parabola u-shaped curve, not quadratic. All right, b is a parabola opening up. So yes, it is a quadratic. C is a U-shaped curve opening to the left. It's kind of a quadratic function, but it's not in this form. So it's not in that form, so we'd say no, but that is actually a quadratic function, but it's in a little different form. And a U-shaped curve opening down, that is in the form. So if it wants to be in this form where the X is squared, it must open up or down. It can open right and left, okay? Great. So you've got your assignment. Let's get after it.